All right, gang, I uh, just wanna share with you a few drills that I work on on the range to, uh, to essentially enhance uh, skill or to make a better shooter. These are things that you can do on the range when you're there by yourself or whatever you do. Uh, this can be part of your range plan, which you should have a range plan every time you go to the range. Uh, but uh, these are things that you can add to help yourself and make you a better shooter or at least enhance your skills. So the first thing that I like to do before doing any of the crazy cool stuff uh, is actually a little bit of the, uh, the marksmanship. So what I'll do is I'll do five rounds, take my time, and I'm wanting to put those five rounds in the bullseye essentially of where, where I'm aiming at, okay? Um, I'm accounting for holdover, I'm accounting for all the things, uh, but I wanna do five rounds as best I can working on those fundamentals. Uh, making sure my grip is good, making sure my uh, side alignment side picture, my trigger control, all the things are good. Uh, and then from there, I will add a little bit of, of uh, excitement to it. So first thing, five rounds, slow fire, or not slow fire, however fast you wanna do them, but five good rounds. So I'm gonna start out five rounds into the, uh, the bullseye there. Okay, so let's go downtown. So five rounds in essentially the black of where I wanna hit it, okay? So then now I'm working my, my fundamentals. I got that uh, pretty good. So then I'll go ahead and add a little bit to that. Now it depends on what you're working on that day. If you're working on speed, then now I pick up the, the, the pace. I'll work on some cadence drills. Maybe I'll run uh, split times at starting at, well, I just did about a second or two but I'll start about half a second then work down to a quarter second. So just a little example, I'll work say three round drills. Three rounds at an intended uh, half a second uh, split. So I'll just go ahead and set the timer up real quick. Okay, so here, same target. Let's try to do half a second split. I think I did five on that one. Lost count, sorry. <laughs> Uh, but running, uh, actually a little slow on that one. I'm running about three quarter seconds uh, split on that one. So my perception of time is a little off. I'll go ahead and pick up the, uh, the pace. Promise, I'll do three rounds this time. So on this one. Okay, I really can't count today. So on that one, running closer to half a second split. Trying to keep my, um, my shots in that, uh, that black, okay? And then of course you can graduate to quarter second. So we'll show you a little bit of that. About quarter second right there, okay? Running that and trying to stay in the black. Now, come downtown with me. For the most part, all these rounds are right here. I have one flyer, okay? In order to get better, you have to allow yourself to fail a little bit. So on the first uh, set, I went ahead and I showed you, hey, work your fundamentals and then let's put some time to it. Well, when I started putting time to it, I'm gonna go ahead and allow, if, if I'm not comfortable at that speed, I'm gonna go ahead and allow myself a, in this case, this whole circle. So if you are not comfortable doing, uh, say, half a second splits, then don't get crazy on me like, hey, it's gotta be the bulls every time because really what you need to do is you need to get uh, used to shooting at a half a second. That needs to come first at that rhythm. Get comfortable with that rhythm and keep it in this palm size, which is essentially this circle here, and then stay at that uh, speed until you get comfortable and walk those rounds into the bullseye that you want. Then from there, pick up the pace, go down to a quarter second in this case. Again, keep yourself here, walk yourself in there. Right? That's how you make yourself a faster shooter. So actually, those are two things in here. One, working fundamentals and accuracy. And two, this is a drill that I work on to make myself or help myself uh, become a faster shooter or maintain the speed that I'm trying to, to maintain. So those are two drills right there. Another drill that I like to do, nothing crazy, is I just like to work uh, the holster draw. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll start out, hey, I just wanna get, a holster draw, it, it might be a second and a half, something crazy slow. So on the beep. 
okay? One, four, three, crazy slow, okay? To get myself, my, my um, body into the uh, uh, position, essentially warmed up, so that way you can drive it, okay? Uh, so just getting used to the, uh, the movements and stuff, okay? And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and pick up the pace as I go. I'll do about, depending on how I feel, five to 10 reps. So I'll do it again. Okay, reload involved, that was not intended, but um, if you have that, you have that. So call that a mulligan. Okay, a little faster on that one. Okay, one, two, three. And then you keep going from there. At some point, then you go a lot faster. Okay, and that's at a second. Okay, and you can keep going from there and you get it. Uh, but then just work in the speed. What I will tell you at the end, once you've gotten to the, the reps at the time that you're comfortable, then I would tell you, slow it down for a couple more times. At the end, go ahead and just beep yourself again and don't go robotic slow, but just go smooth. And reinforce good technique, good fundamentals, because you don't want to walk away from that exercise trying to go so fast that to the point where your technique starts to come loose because essentially that's what's going to happen you're pushing that envelope just reinforcing your brain and your body what right feels like so that's another drill that i like to do another uh fun drill that i like to do uh are the reloads uh one on ones okay so one shot reload one shot okay and by the way i'm doing this though the, the one on ones after the two drills that i just talked about because now in this whole process from the beep, I'm gonna get a, a holster draw rep, okay? So now throughout the rest of my time or what I'm doing on the range, I'm getting more and more reps of holster draw. So I'm adding to this. So I'm gonna shoot one, reload, shoot one. So that one, just working through the reloads, that one was at 211, so not my fastest, but uh, working from there. Then you could do a couple more reps and just continue to work the fluidness. Don't try necessarily to go fast. Just try to be fluid through this whole process. So I'll go ahead and, and do it again. But my point is I'm not trying to go fast. If you try to go fast, you're gonna bot yourself up. Just try to be fluid, fluid, okay? Having the fingers and everything like where they need to be and flow through it. So that one's a little faster, 185, okay? And we could be here all day, but um, you could work it little by little, staying or trying to be smooth on it rather than fast. Speed will just come with proficiency in that sense. But again, slow is slow, fast is fast. You wanna get this quickly, okay? So that's something that you can do there. So those are a few drills uh, right there. Another drill that I like to do is essentially two to the chest, one to the head, um, only because uh, it works a little bit of that uh, double tap, and then it in incorporates uh, multiple target engagement. So I'm now having a chest shot and a head shot. So I'm gonna move over uh, to this target to give you a, a better visual. But I'm just working here, two shots to the chest, one shot to the head, and just doing it a few times. Okay, and then one thing that I'm gonna check are my splits on transitioning. So the split on transitioning was about half a second, okay? So eh, it's okay, I'd like to get it a little faster. So then I'm gonna stay there and I'm gonna do a couple reps of that and work on that transitioning. The things that I'm focused on uh, uh, transitioning from say chest to head in this case, one target to the next, is a little ditty that I like to say, look, shift, settle, shoot. So first I'm gonna look, I'm gonna snap my eyes on the new target, which is in between the eyes. I'm gonna shift, and to my new, I'm gonna uh, drive that red dot into the new target. I'm gonna settle in my new position because I've disrupted what I originally had. And then once I've settled, then I'm gonna shoot. So look, shift, settle, shoot, okay? So if you want, I'll just do it one more time. Okay, look, shift, settle, shoot, okay? And drop that uh, other one. So uh, we'll talk about that later. 
<laughs> and then uh, another drill, so that's four drills. The fifth drill that I'd like to, uh, to share is actually uh, one-handed uh, one-r-ones, okay? Now, what are the chances of you doing a one-handed one-r-one in a defensive situation? Is, is it possible? Yeah. Uh, is it likely? Nah. The chances of you reloading in a defensive situation from a statistical standpoint are very, very low, okay? However, uh, the reason why I like to run this drill is it reinforces the one-handed shooting. If I need to hold on to a loved one or something and shoot one-handed, uh, not necessarily because I'm, um, say, injured, but because I need to hold on to somebody or something like that, um, and just reinforcing the, the mechanical steps of reloading. It really engages your mind as well as your ability to work your gear. And that's really the reason why I like it, because it makes you work your gear, know your gear, in order to do it right. So I'll go ahead and set it up real quick. So just like a regular 1R1, you're gonna have a round in the chamber on an empty mag, okay? And then this is gonna happen uh, one-handed. I'll go ahead and use the same target. Okay, 632 on the total, um, 474 on the reload, okay? So ideally you're getting it into the five second, okay? But that's what you're gonna work down to. You can do whatever fast you want, okay? But if you notice, things that I'm, I'm doing, now I have this Safari Land holster, this gun is, is in here, I have to use the thumb brake in order to release the, um, the firearm. So I don't want to, on the reload, shove this thing in to where it's locked, because then I have to get the thumb brake again. What I like to do with the slide lock to the rear is just let it set, okay? Let it set, that way I could just pull it out, ready to go again. I'm just kind of place holding it. Uh, then from there, go get my new mag in here, come up, as I'm coming up and drawing, I'm sending that, that slide, that way I can engage as soon as I'm pressed out. I'll show you one more time. Okay, a little bit faster on that one, 588, 446 on the, uh, on the reload, okay? So you can get it however fast you want, it's just a fun drill that you can do. Works one-handed, works one-handed uh, um, holster draws, the one-handed manipulation and things like that. Um, now if concealment is your, your bag and you wanna do it concealed and you're running say appendix, then put on your appendix rig with your sidecar and essentially do the same thing. The only difference with that is that now you have to re-clear your garment on that reload. Little uh, tip is when you put that firearm back in the holster, because the garment most likely is clearing it, I mean uh, covering it, take your thumb, the gun's pointed down, take your thumb, pull up, your, your garment will be uh, uh, over your hands. That way you can get the gun into the holster, immediately go over to the sidecar, grab the um, mag, put it in, your garment is still over here because you're doing everything tight, okay? Then come out and send it, okay? That's something that you can do on that one. That's an extra layer of complexity. Uh, you're gonna wanna do these drills in concealed. If your concealment is your bag, then this is great and all, it's all fun, but I would encourage you to change your rig, go concealed and run it that way. So you could have a whole day of what I just uh, uh, explained, open tactical rig or concealed, and it'll be a totally different experience. So you can do uh, either way. So there's a few drills that I like to share with you, five drills that I like to do on the range. Uh, I have metrics, I like to record my times. If you're a, a data nerd like me, um, I like to record my times to see a bench line. If I do five reps of something, I'm gonna take the five reps, I'm gonna take the average, and that is my average for whatever that, that exercise is. I'll go ahead and annotate it on a spreadsheet at home, and then that way when I go to the range and I print out my range plan, on the side I have a, a column that says average for all those drills. So I know in my head that if my holster draw is at .9, let's just say, that I'm trying to beat .9 today. That is my benchmark. So, a couple things that you can do to help yourself improve on the range when you go. If you think all gun laws are an infringement and you live behind the enemy lines in the People's Republic of California, then check out our Unconvicted Felons uh, t-shirt. Uh, came out with this t-shirt design for you where uh, most of us are fed up with the, uh, the situation here in, the, in California. So check it out, check out our website, 
awesome t-shirt coming at you and our new line of two arms uh, where it stands for two a rights matter so check out our new t-shirt and help us feed our dog